Alright, so in this installment of my playlist on Lewis theory, I'd like to focus on how Lewis theory can be applied to covalent bonding. Now in this video, I'm not really going to show you how to draw Lewis structures just yet. Um, there's a step-by-step -step method to go about when you draw Lewis structures for molecular compounds and polyatomic ions and stuff like that, but I'm actually going to save that for another video. In this video, I just want to talk about some of the underlying connections between Lewis theory and covalent bonding. So in other words, you know, how, can, how could you use Lewis theory to um, predict the you know, proportions of atoms that combine together in nature? Um, in other words, the compounds that form in nature, the, the stable compounds, if you will. So uh, the answer to this question is, well, first of all, you have to remember that covalent bonding uh, is a sharing of valence electrons between two nonmetals. And these two nonmetals can share electrons in such a way as that both of the atoms, or all of the atoms, if there's more than one uh, atom you know, connected together in a chain or something like that, electrons can be shared so that all atoms possess an octet. And in the case of hydrogen, it, uh, it's a duet. And I'm not really going to explain necessarily why. If you want a, a good explanation on the, um, the definitions of an octet and a duet, you can uh, go to one of the earlier videos in this playlist. So uh, I think a good place to start uh, when it comes to understanding uh, covalent bonding and how Lewis theory can be applied to it is, to, is just to uh, consider uh, two atoms uh, let's do the all too familiar one. Let's say hydrogen and oxygen. And the valence electrons of oxygen are shown in red, six valence electrons, and the valence electrons of the hydrogen are shown in blue. And hydrogen, of course, has one valence electron. So, is there any way that hydrogen can combine with oxygen so that we get uh, a duet for hydrogen and an octet for oxygen? Well, it looks like if we add the hydrogen uh, to the oxygen uh, just by sharing these two electrons with one another, uh, I'll draw the hydrogen closer. So, the hydrogen and the oxygen are sharing this pair of electrons and this one comes from the hydrogen but oxygen has uh, seven electrons now uh, it doesn't really have an octet so we need to uh, do something else we need to add you guessed it another hydrogen when uh, hydrogen combines with oxygen in a two to one ratio, what you get is a duet for the hydrogen atoms and an octet for the oxygen atoms. Note that both the electron that, uh, both the electron that comes from the uh, hydrogen and the electron come, that come from the oxygen count in the octet and or duet for both atoms. So in other words, the red and the blue electron both count towards the duet of the H atom. And all six of the red atoms and both of the blue atoms, those all together count uh, towards the octet for the oxygen atom. So uh, we would therefore expect, since uh, we have noble gas electron configurations for both atoms, or for all three atoms in other words, uh, we would therefore expect this to be a stable molecule, and turns out it is. Um, it's very stable, it covers the majority of our planet. So, all right. Uh, let's go over uh, how Lewis theory can be applied to uh, other other compounds, other molecules. So, if you recall, you may have learned already that the halogens, which are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, uh, you may recall that these all exist as diatomic molecules. So, fluorine ex exists as F2, Cl, uh, Cl2 and so on. And the reason why these elements all form uh, diatomic molecules can be accounted for by Lewis theory. So I'm just going to pick chlorine out of the bunch. If we draw the Lewis structure for chlorine, we see that chlorine has, uh, it's in group 7, so it has 7 valence electrons.
and chlorine can actually share an electron with another chlorine, which also has seven valence electrons. If these two chlorine atoms uh, share these two unpaired electrons with one another, then you'll get octets. So in other words, we'll get Cl Both atoms possess an octet, so we would expect chlorine to exist as diatomic chlorine molecules, and indeed it does. By the way, you can also represent uh, the chlorine, uh, the diatomic chlorine molecule in this manner. This is a little bit cleaner, and I think this is the one that more people are familiar with. Uh, in this version of the uh, of the picture, the um, the pair that is shared between the two uh, atoms is shown as a line while the uh, individual pairs that belong to the individual atom are shown as dots. So there's actually a name for uh, these two different types of electron pairs. Uh, the pair that is shared between two atoms, we call that a bonding pair. That is a bonding pair of electrons. And uh, any, any electron pairs that an atom possesses all to itself is called a lone pair of electrons. So just a little term, uh, terminology for you. So again, since chlorine has seven, seven valence electrons, it can combine with another chlorine uh, to yield a stable uh, diatomic uh, chlorine molecule that has octets on both atoms. And since fluorine, bromine, and iodine also have seven valence electrons, uh, they exist as diatomic molecules for the same reason that chlorine does. So, yeah, you can't see that. That says bonding pair. Sorry about that. Adjust the camera. Okay. So at this stage, I'd like to point out that, you know, so far in the examples that we've seen, uh, the atoms have, have shared uh, just one electron pair with one another, but I want to point out that uh, the number of electron pairs that can be shared between two atoms is not limited to one. In other words, there are atoms that can share two and maybe even three electron pairs with one another. So if we consider oxygen, uh, oxygen has six valence electrons, as we stated before. So how does oxygen exist uh, in its stable state? Does it exist as just oxygen atoms, or maybe does it exist as a diatomic molecule uh, like the halogens? And the answer is, it does exist as a diatomic molecule, but not necessarily for the same reasons that the halogens do. Each of these oxygen atoms has the ability to share both of its electron pairs with one another. In other words, uh, the Lewis structure of the whole picture would look like this. Uh, notice that uh, both oxygen atoms have an octet, so if I were to um, cover up this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if I were to cover up this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice that all of the shared pair electrons count when you, uh, when you do the octet for each atom. So a cleaner way to write this uh, using the line notation would be O, O, and this is what the Lewis structure for diatomic oxygen looks like. So uh, this brings me to my next point. Uh, anytime two electron pairs are shared between two atoms, this is what we call a double bond. And in general, double bonds are actually shorter and stronger uh, than single bonds. They hold electrons, uh, to, or excuse me, they hold nuclei together more effectively uh, than, um, than single pairs of electrons do. So, We've seen uh, two electron pairs, pairs shared between two atoms. How about three? Where, is, where do we see that in nature? 
And the answer is nitrogen. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. And it turns out that if the nitrogen combines with another nitrogen, which also has five valence electrons, uh, all three of these unpaired electrons that are shown in the Lewis structure for each atom can be shared with the other atom and give octets for both atoms. So the real picture looks like this. One. And so all six of these electrons here are shared uh, between both of the nitrogen atoms. So we have three bonding pairs and we have one lone pair. So uh, a cleaner way to write it would be So when two uh, electron pairs were shared between two atoms, we call that a double bond. Well, uh, for three electron pairs shared between two atoms, we call that a triple bond. And for the same reason that double bonds are stronger than single bonds, triple bonds are actually stronger than double bonds. And they're also shorter. So we've seen that, uh, let's, let's just recap uh, for a second. We've seen that uh, with, uh, with fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, oxygen, and nitrogen. I don't know why I just wrote a Z. <laughs> My mind is drifting off. For fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, oxygen, and nitrogen, uh, all of these uh, elements should exist as uh, diatomic molecules and the only reason we uh, you know explain this is just from Lewis theory uh, all we had to use was Lewis theory uh, to predict how these should uh, should exist in nature just using the octet rule um, hydrogen should also exist as a diatomic molecule um, and you could see why right hydrogen has one valence electron and if it combines with another hydrogen each of these have a duet, so we can add H2, or excuse me, H to the list as well. All of these are diatomic. So, basically, uh, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, Lewis theory can be uh, can be useful because you know it, it, it predicts the stability of molecules. Uh, for instance, you know, hydrogen and oxygen we, we saw earlier combined to form water. Well, that, that's H2O, so why wouldn't we expect H3O? Well, the reason is oxygen has six valence electrons, so that six valence electron would have to go, I don't know, maybe up here or something, and that would violate the, uh, the Lewis rule. Um, and then we wouldn't have an octet, we'd actually have nine electrons, so that would be, that's also not good for, uh, for Lewis theory, that's against the rules. So, you know, we wouldn't expect H3O to exist in nature, but what if we were to remove one of the electrons? In other words, what if it was H3O plus, or just H3O plus? Turns out, this ion uh, does exist in nature. It's actually very stable in uh, aqueous solution. This is called the hydronium ion. And if you uh, if you do acid base, then uh, then you'll you'll definitely know the hydronium ion for sure. So Lewis theory is useful not only because it can uh, it, it can show you which molecules are stable and which aren't. But it's also useful because it shows us that you know these molecules uh, combine in these you know in these discrete entities called molecules. Um, you know, in, in contrast to ionic bonding, which uh, in, in which you have these non-directional ionic bonds that form lattices, you actually have uh, a bond between two atoms actually anchors two specific atoms together. Um, it's highly directional, and. That is the reason why we have uh, the fundamental unit of these uh, molecules and polyatomic ions is just, you know, the molecule. So, 
you know, for, 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 for those reasons, Lewis theory is very useful. And um, in the coming videos, I'm going to show you how to draw Lewis structures for all kinds of different compounds and polyatomic ions. So, good luck.